What's up y'all, MC here. Today I want to show you guys one of my favorite knives because I think it's a really underrated knife. And as I go through my stuff sometimes, I come across one and I just remember how good it is and how much I like it. And I want to show you something you may not have seen or may not have given a chance. Now of course it's not the newest or latest and greatest, but this is my O-Knife Parrot. Now he's a little chunker. I don't know if he's a fifth pocket size. He's a little big for that, but he is a little chunker, but honestly, He's very well made, and I'm going to go over it with you real quick. So, mine's a blue G10. They do have a, like a dark gray, black uh, micarta. But this is some of the nicest G10 I have ever felt. It's so smooth. The edges are done really well. Nice little contouring to it so it's not a flat surface, and I appreciate that. Sometimes those flat knives just don't work for me. Um, nice hardware all around it. Nothing on the pivot collar, kind of a plain Jane. Uh, now the pocket clip, pocket clip's not the best, not the worst, uh, but it's not reversible, so lefties be damned. Now these are OEM'd by Kaiser, so you've got that comfort, even if you're not totally trusting of the O-Knife name, these are made by Kaiser, so there's nothing to worry about as far as quality. These are made by knife makers, reputable knife makers, okay? It's a front flipper, that's gonna turn some of you guys off. But it is a really easy one, a really good one. And you can get it anywhere along this flipper here. Like I can get way out front and get it. But back here, man, it just fires out. And it does have a stubby little 154 cm blade. Again, very nice looking, very effective blade shape. Nice tip for you. Um, one bad thing is like O-Knife does a lot of billboarding. Like O-Knife, 154 cm Parrot the that's the designer i assume the model number I, that's too much calm down we don't need all these things i would much rather you billboard the uh pocket clip or get yourself a little o knife insignia on that collar than billboard my blade up not the end of the world though okay it's a liner lock very nice access to the liner lock like i said so he doesn't drop shut but you can he's not hard to get shut either no problem there i think i can get this one over the top which is pretty rare for me and now i can't because i bragged about it never mind i can't do that but i can never do that so don't i have short fingers don't take me as an example i'm sure the rest of you will do it with no problem um he's got a little weight to him he's not terrible so don't mind that um get a three and a half finger grip but if I go up into this choil I can get that comfortable four finger grip now there's jimping up to there which is weird I don't know why companies do this this is one thing that baffles me I can't imagine any comfortable grip where my thumb or index finger is gonna land there everything's gonna be up here if I go over the top it's gonna be there if I do this my thumbs gonna be there if you're going to do this, just come on all the way up here. Give me that jimping that I can use where my fingers are going to land. Don't, don't short me, man. It's frustrating. Like I said, I, I, have, I know why they did the flipper tab. I totally get why you jimp that, and it helps. But I'm not flipping from down here anyway. That's useless. Either get rid of all that or give it to me, you know, give me another three-eighths of an inch or so where I can use it. All right? Um... The liners do show there's no lanyard hole, but I wouldn't put a lanyard on this one anyway. Nice looking standoffs though, so you could probably get a lanyard in there if you, well, that's narrow. Yeah, well, you probably could if you really wanted to. I wouldn't, but you might. Now, I can pinch it out like that and do that. That's kind of fun. I don't really count that as a deployment method, because you know a lot of you won't do that or don't like to do that or don't need to do that. So it is a one deployment style, and that is this kind of half and half front top flipper. So anyway, 154 cm Kaiser bloodline, so the action is always just sweet. No problems there. It's a very good looking knife. It feels sturdy, feels well made. I do wish there was some more jimping up here. The other negative is they're around 70 bucks, which is a little high. But um, you can get them on White Mountain, you catch a sale on Amazon or O-Knife, you can get them cheaper. And for 154 cm, 
it's really not bad. I see way worse out there for 14C and my card and 14C and G10. So if you like these chunky little knives, this one will not disappoint you. I really like him. Um, like I said, he was the first flip, top flipper I ever was like, okay, I can do this. And it gave me, <laughs> and I gave some other ones a chance because I first had the Feist, the Kaiser Feist. That was terrible. I, and I wasn't going to buy any more front flippers because I assumed they were for, well, just people more talented than me, which that's fine. But this one I liked so much and I gave it a chance. And this one really turned me back on to front and top flippers. Let's try one more time. Come on, baby, you can do it. Do it for the people. Do it for the people. Maybe I'll edit that part out. Um, so anyway, I'll put links in the description as to where you can pick this guy up. It does come in a black stone wash blade. Uh, I think it's stone wash. It might be uh, it might be DLC, but I think it's black stone wash. So I'll put a link to these in the description so you guys can check them out. Again, this is my underrated knife of Saturday. I hope you guys are having a great day. What's your favorite underrated knife that doesn't get a lot of love out there, man? I want to know in the comments, guys. Oh! On that, I'm out. Bye, guys.